Why this high price tag in Brazil? What's going on? Good morning, Betty Lou. Well, you know, right now, the problems down in Brazil, as I would call them, that right now the Brazilians are holding their breath as the uh, World Cup begins. Uh, they've had some challenges down there with civil unrest, um, all of the problems with the FIFA, with the buildings, with the transportation, the telecommunications. It's, uh, it's, been, a, it's been a problem. And for the, mil for the 600 thousand to a million foreign uh, travelers that they expect to come in for the uh, for the cup games it could be a challenge so i think everyone's holding their breath to see what happens uh, but this price tag though uh, what what would underscore that is it the fact that this is being held in a dozen cities in brazil yeah you know there's good, the, the the games are being played in 12 different cities throughout brazil if you fly from manaus up north down to the south it's a five-hour flight so it's a huge country they have to spread their security forces around, so that's one of the issues. There's a 22% increase in security forces from the South African World, uh, World Cup games. Uh, if you were running security there, Jim, what would, you, uh, what would you focus on? Well, I think one of the things, and I'm, it's nice to see the Brazilians have done this, they've established what I'll call an Operations Intel Fusion Center up in Brasilia. Uh, they have all the different uh, sites linked into that with the smaller fusion centers down there. They've also brought in liaison officers from the different countries that are there uh, to liaison with the Brazilian security forces, whether it be military, law enforcement, uh, to really continue to work the information in real time. Uh, the biggest things I would be looking for is watching the social media, uh, watching the civil unrest, I believe that's the biggest issue to travelers and for the safety and security is if these um, flash mobs come up uh, for any of the protests, that could put a big crimp on the games. What is safety like for the World Cup versus other major global events, Jim, like uh, the Olympics, for instance? Well, they're very similar. You know, the, uh, the Olympics, the World Cup, um, major events, they're very similar. The, the, the thing with the World Cup is, especially here in Brazil, I believe the biggest factor is the distance they have to travel to all different places. Uh, you're talking hundreds of miles where London, uh, at the last Olympics in London, I mean, they're, they're, right, they're all concentrated there, so you can concentrate your security forces. One of the issues could be is if you have an issue, let's say, in Manaus, and another issue going on in Sao Paulo or down in, uh, down in uh, Brasilia, right. that now you've spread your forces around. Uh, and where would you rank, Jim, uh, Br Brazil as, uh, you know, in terms of danger versus other countries? Yeah, I'd, I'd call Brazil right now, we call it for our clients in Tiger Swan, uh, a medium to high threat country, mostly because of the crime. Um, we have several of Tiger Swan's uh, clients that are down there and who are down there for the World Cup that are linked into our op center down there, and we believe the biggest threat to them right now is between where they're staying in the venue and the flash crime that can happen there. And tell me, Jim, the technology for your clients down in Brazil right now, the technology that you're using to protect them. What's different this time? Sure. Well, for us, is again, it's all about what type of information we can get out there to provide our clients real-time, quick information so we can move them away from a, from a position. One of the things, one of our uh, software that we're using down there is social media gathering. We scrape the social media. We're watching for these indicators that will allow social media that really how a lot of the, uh, the mobs and the protests are being done and they're gathered over social media. Mm. So if we can monitor that, we can move things around and bypass those for our clients don't get caught up in them. Uh, and don't you have a tracking device that you've now armed some of your clients with? Yeah, we do. We've taken our experiences from the military. We have a small beacon that all our clients carry around the world. Uh, we can monitor them in real time, both from an Iridium-based GPS, and if they happen to go inside and they lose that Iridium uh, feed, then we can track them inside uh, on a cellular GSM system. And it gets down to one meter resolution and really gives us great, um, uh, you know, gr great observation of where our people are at all times. Uh, and Jim, on a final note, uh, what country or countries are harder uh, to secure clients than others? I mean, is Brazil fairly easy and open? Are there other countries that are a lot more difficult? <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a difficult question. We could spend all day on that. <laughs> um, you know, Br Brazil is an interesting country. Let's take that right now. It's, it's open, but I'll give you an example. There are days that our clients, we pick them up at the airport. It's a it's a 45-minute drive from the airport to downtown Sao Paulo. The next day, it could turn out to be a four-hour drive because of all the, the, uh, the traffic and the disassociation that goes on. 
Um, the Middle East is still a difficult place to, uh, to, for our, our clients. Uh, we've really watched that piece again because of the, the uncertainty. Uh, but right now, I think Brazil is a, a big focus for us and a lot of other uh, safety and security apparatuses.